From New York City-based and internationally exhibited experimental ceramist, Lara Sadaiga comes a program about how to make your ceramic dreams come true. Today, we're going to talk about the half sphere. And now I'm going to start pinching it. So I'm just going to keep it turning in my hand, and I'm pushing the heel of my hand. My little piece of advice for a pinch pot would be to keep your hands wet. So have a wet towel handy, not to make your hands very, very wet, but just kind of moist so that the clay keeps moving in your hand. So I'm going to push the heel of my hand in. Now I'm going to switch over to my thumb and keep turning. I'm really pressing in from the bottom. Pinching, pinching. Now, if this starts to open more wide than you want it, on occasion you can pinch it in like this and go over and do like a quick compression at the top. All the things that you say, I'm thinking about them all day. All the jokes that you tell me make so much sense. So I'm starting to get more and more round, and I'm just compressing with my inner thumb. My hands get dry, right? You can see it's starting to get a little dry. My hand in the water, and keep going. Now I'm thinning out a little higher up. You want to make sure you don't have any cracking near the rim. So again, if you notice that it's going further out than you want it to go, you could always pinch it in. But also, if you go over the side, the top with that light towel, and compress it, then you'll have kind of a nicer rim happening, right? I don't want to lightly wipe it, um, but I do want to compress it. You could also use a chamois or a disposable chamois with the newspaper. My clay is pretty soft and that's helpful for this process and to avoid cracking. And now I'm just trying to really utilize and get the whole thing same thickness. I'm happy to do them with you. Oh, all the pictures you send me and send me make so much sense. Oh, I will meet you summer, fall or spring. When a summer, fall or spring. Share with me and tell me everything. I want to hear you, hear you sing. If I place this down, this bottom is going to be flat. If you're not interested in having a, such a flat bottom, I can just kind of hit it. Right, I've pinched it pretty far, but my clay is very wet. So if I want it to hold a shape, then maybe I want to place it upside down. And then as it dries a little bit, I can go in and continue to shape it. Also, what you're able to do as it dries is I could take a rib and I could smooth it down if you're uninterested in the pinching um, style, the pinching look, you can always take your rib and you're just gonna run it along your pot and smooth it out. building a bowl um, based off of a cylindrical shape. So you're going to start 
by wiping up top of your wheel. Right? I'm going to turn that off. Throw this down with a firm throw. And then I'm going to turn it and make sure it's really attached like a very peaceful, grassy hill. This way I know the clay's not going to fly off. Right? Um, also, I have water. I don't recommend doing like water, water party, water everywhere. You don't need that much water. Um, you need a lot of water, but you need it between your hands and the clay. So I prefer dipping my hands into the bucket of water to cover the part of my hands that I need um, with water as I'm doing this. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna increase the speed. I'm going to get into my main centering position, which is my left elbow in my left hip bone, just right in front of my hip bone right there where it's like bone, skin, fabric, fabric, skin. And then I'm going to put my hand down. As I lean forward, it's going to apply pressure straight forward, kind of like imagining that my arm bone here is a stick that I'm jamming between my body and the clay. My other hand is going to do this um, kind of side karate chop pressure right here, like this, folded over like bird shadow. Go, go! No linking of the thumbs, but they just kind of overlap a little bit like that. So I'm going to turn up the wheel full speed, and I'm going to dip my hands in the water, especially here where my hands are touching the clay, and then I'm just going to lean forward. I can lean forward more, I can press down more. And really, you can center your clay just like this. This is your main centering position. And sometimes I like to pull in a third point of pressure, and that is right here, with these fingers just pulling in, right there, in that way. Dip my hands in the water. You're going to notice at the beginning you're going to be dipping your hands in the water a lot, right? So I'm just really just leaning into it. Adjusting my pressure. If you have any slip that comes off, this wet stuff, don't worry about it. Um, just let it go over to the side. Also, I might have this little clay skirt here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean that off. Lean into it. I'm aiming for a nice dome shape. Somewhat medium wide, medium tall for just kind of a basic bully shape. So now I can check to see if it's centered. How do you know it's centered? You can take any tool, slowly approach your pot or your clay with it. If it's touching um, and it makes an even line all the way around, then you know it's centered. So that's great. Now I'm going to drill the hole. So what I like to say is this whole time you've had pressure, really serious pressure coming out of your arm now. Now you're going to... to uh, just gently put your hand on top, kind of like you're holding your lover's cheek, like, oh man, I really love you. But your lover did not do the dishes and you're angry, so you show him the middle finger, or her, right? Um, then you take that middle finger and you go with your best friend, the thumb, to the coffee shop to talk about your woes about your partner not doing the dishes. So I'm going to do that and make a little dimple, right? Then I'm going to dip my hand in the water. If I feel like this little dimple is in the center, then I'm going to go ahead and drill straight down. So I'm going to drill straight down along my thumb and pull that out. I don't want to go all the way through because otherwise I have a bottomless pot, right? So I'm aiming to have about half and a little less than half an inch at the bottom. Then I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to stick it back in, and I'm going to pull the bottom open into my hand like a secret, right? So this is a secret because you don't see it so much on the outside. But the bottom here is very open and the top is less open. If you open up the whole thing like with a straight finger like this, then the whole thing will open up and you'll have like a plate when you meant to make like a vase of some sort, right? So I'm like, cool. Now, this is an important switch in position. I need to switch sides and you need to change wheel speeds, okay? So I'm going to slow the wheel speed down to a medium speed. And I'm going to be using my hands very slowly, similarly to when you're out of toothpaste, right? Um, imagine you have a hot date tonight, you go to you change, go to brush your teeth, and uh, you're out of toothpaste. So you're going to slowly move 
the toothpaste up the toothpaste tube with very specific pressure from your fingers. The same thing happens here as you pull the clay wall up. The middle fingers are my stars, they're the stars of the show, and it and um and then the rest of the fingers are there as the support, the backup dancers, right? Um you want to make sure your hands are wet. I like to also hold a sponge in my outside hand when I do this. Now, that doesn't mean I'm using like a vague sponge surface. It just means that my fingers are up here at the front of the sponge, really working through it. So I'm going to go in. I'm actually going to slow the wheel down just a little bit to a nice medium speed, right? You have two speeds. You have the wheel speed, which is a nice medium, and you have the speed of your hands moving up, which is a slow, right? So I'm going to go in with my outside hand, then lift up and meet my inside hand. And move upward. Now I like to move up and in normally if I'm going into a cylinder. We're aiming to do like a bowl shape. So I don't want to go up and in for too long. And then after every pull, I'm going to compress the rim. So I'm going to build a little box with my fingers like this, inside, outside, top. I'm also going to compress the inside bottom, which just basically means I'm going to take my sponge, I'm going to hold on to my wrist with my left hand, and I'm going to push down like this. Oops, and I accidentally hooked my pinky a little bit, so I try to keep those extra fingers out of the way. And you're just pressing along the bottom. Notice it smooths out the bottom, and this is going to help prevent cracking. Okay. That got a little nutty, so I'm just going to go in there. And now I'm going to pull it up again. So I'm going to dip my hand in the water. Now because I want to go into a wider bowl shape, I'm going to use a lot of pressure at the bottom with my outside hand to get that clay moving. But then I'm going to allow my inside hand to kind of take over so that I can start to get this to be a little wider. And I'm just slowly moving that toothpaste, right? Inside fingers and outside fingers against one another. Until I get to the top, compress the rim. Compress the inside. Right. And now, well, let's do one more pull and then I'll be able to go into shaping. So I'm going to slow the wheel down just a little bit for a slower medium speed. Now, if you adjust your wheel speed, you just need to adjust your hand speed too. Wheel to speed ratio, right? So this one, I'm going to just continue to pull this belly out. And if there's a little wobble, I'm not going to stress out about it. Remember that no one's going to be looking at your stuff turning, and in that way, it's going to be really hard to tell if there's a slight wobble, right? So I'm going to compress that. Now I'm going to do some shaping. And what I like to use just in general to get stability or um, to create the shape is this wooden rib. And I hold it here at 5 o'clock with the clay, pressing against this kind of inner radius portion, this half centimeter right here. So I'm going to just press into that right here. All right. I also like to do something I call Edward rib hands, where you can do the same kind of shaping with your metal rib. And what I love about the metal rib is it's going to take the extra slip away. Um, it can also be a nice way to add um, angles and surfaces to your pots. But you can also use it, like let's say on the inside, if I wanted to focus on volume here. Use it on the inside and use your wooden rib on the outside. That's why I call this Edward Rib Hands. I dressed as Edward Ribhands for Halloween this last year, and my students thought I was wearing regular attire. <laughs> they didn't realize I was in a costume. That's that's Northern Brooklyn for you, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm going to compress the bottom and focus on this shape right here just a little bit. So I'm just going to press. Normally, I would suggest that when you use a rib, you have a hand on the opposite side. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way for this um, top camera. It's, sometimes it's really hard, though, because you want to get the best view, right? You want to get your head in there. Um, 
So I'm like, that's cool. And then here on the outside, I'm going to get my head down so I can see what's going on. And I'm just aiming for like a nice half circle, half sphere. Okay, so let's go with that. I'm going to compress the rim. If I feel like the rim's a little bit off, I might grab the, um, like if it looks like it's jumping a touch, I'm going to grab my needle tool and I'm going to slowly engrave a line through, right? I'm playing like it's a, a record player, like in, gently cutting a line through, right? Right here. So I'm pointing that way. I'm cutting this way until I gently stab myself. And I'm going lower than like the most messed up portion. Here at five o'clock. And then once I gently stab myself, I'm going to lift up and move that out of the way. And I'm just going to build that little box with my fingers. I can also cut some of that extra clay away from the bottom by using this tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut inward, um, trying to follow the inside shape. When you throw a pot, the in important shape is the inside here. You're cutting everything else away to match it. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna go in. Until I hear that. So this cuts the clay away from that portion. Then I'm gonna take my needle t tool, and I'm gonna cut the clay away from the wheel here. that away great so now I'm gonna say I'm complete here um, so it's time to take it off the wheel one trick that I really like is the loose print on the rim right so I've got some time out over here I'm going to it's a little bit narrow but as long as it just barely makes it should work um, you know, make it, make sure you've got a generous piece. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little seal, seal the deal all the way around. Seal the deal. Like the crystal glass song. Then I have a little water party over here at the front of the wheel and then I'm gonna wire the pot towards me to pull that water party underneath we're just gonna loosen it and get it sliding so I'm holding this in my hands like floss and I'm just gonna press down pull towards me press down pull towards me press down pull towards me and it'll naturally start sliding and I can kind of slide it into my hands and lift up. First step is going to be to examine the pot, just like before. I threw this on the hump, which is why that extra weight here. And again, I'm going to just do a little thumbnail scratch where I feel like it goes from really thick to thin. And this is just a matter of practice to get to know that. I have a pretty rounded bottom here from the get-go. And the very bottom is quite thin. Not too thin, but just thinner. But I can definitely take a lot of this off. Great. Now I'm gonna put this down and draw my little quadrant. And then this part you have to do really fast because you're going to be using water suction to stick your pot down. So I'm going to put a thin film of water there and a thin film of water on the rim. And I'm going to place it down and then kind of turn it really quickly. Kind of like I'm, I'm sanding it just to start to create this kind of like layer of slip. And then I'm going to just do what I did before but much faster. So it's touching, touching, three. So I need to move it a little bit away from three. Touching, 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 touching. 
So still three. So I'm going to push it a little bit away from three. And I can feel it already getting tacky, right? And I want that. I want to have that stickiness. Now I'm going to turn the wheel off and press down securely just to be sure that it's really stuck. Give it a minute. Now know that your pot might just fly off the wheel at any point, but if it does, that's okay. You can just make it again. I'm going to turn the wheel on fast now. Grab my trimming tool. Use mountains and valleys. I'm going to start with the corner. My arms and my body hold this like a pencil. And I'm just going to go down to 5 o'clock. And I'm going to be really careful not to like go up and down with the clay. If it's Especially if it's really cut off crooked, your hand's going to want to go like this. So you're going to do your best and lock into your body. Sometimes I've pulled my like armpit in here. I've held my face in to try to hold it. Now I'm going to go across. down to five o'clock, tight spiral. a little bit and I'm holding the ribbon away to like kind of scrape the clay away whereas when I'm using it to shape when I'm throwing it's um, a slightly more open angle right here you're really trying to just scrape and smooth and I can go all the way down to the bottom because I don't have those clay balls there just be careful with the metal rip because it likes to get caught on those tapes that And you could smooth it down more with some burnishing with that flat edge. Be careful not to overwork it, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to pull it off. I like to set the wheel on to a slow speed and then just slowly start to grab my pot to remove it. I saw my first climbing kiln. Actually, I found it, and this was exhilarating. 
I had a very unclear map with only the main roads drawn, but no street names, like on many of the maps which I've used in Japan. I wandered from the ceramic and glass center through many teeny tiny streets in the general east direction, in the area which was streetless on my map. An old lady with a little dog strolled past. I asked her where we were on the map. This normally involved a series of grunting, pointing at the ground with a silly soft accent when saying the word here, sounding more like here, here, as though I'm not an English speaker. I have no idea why this happens to my tone and accent. I would stop if I could, but normally just roll into it uncontrollably. They never seem to mind, though. She understood, as they always do, and kindly, as they always do, showed me where we were. I then pointed to the spot on the map where the kiln was located, in the streetless blob, and asked where, with a questioning look on my face. She pointed in a northeast direction, and so I went. I walked through more teeny tiny streets with amazing, interesting-looking homes, possibly factories, workspaces, and closed diners. I'm a huge fan of corrugated steel as it rusts and the ceramic-tiled roofs among the trees. I passed just a few people along the way who simply looked at me like, where are you going, look? The sun was setting and the light was beautiful. September 10th. Uh-oh, there's lasers! <laughs> Cut. <laughs>